Well, it's been over a year now, and after multiple delays, look what's finally here. Ruby Combat Ready has finally arrived. So, I figure today is a good day to crack it open and see what the final product actually is, and give my overall opinions on it, and hopefully find out what exactly, or who exactly, this extra villain is in the overall Ruby series. Now, I was one of the lucky ones to get the signed copy of Ruby Combat Ready. So I bought two copies of the game. I thought that the signed copy would be on the front of the box underneath the shrink wrap. I'm hoping that it's on one of the boards underneath because I honestly have no idea which one is which. So I'm gonna crack both of these puppies open and see if they remembered to put the signature on here, because I have one signed copy that I'm going to keep in mint condition, the other one that I'm going to actually play, use, and maybe put out a review or gameplay on if I can find people to play it with me. So let's crack these puppies open. All right, now that the nice little background is set up with all these beautiful play mats here, we can get started on the actual opening. So we got two boxes to open as well as the Kickstarter exclusives. We're going to take a look at those as well as the villain miniatures, which are also Kickstarter exclusive. And yes, I did get two copies of each of the Kickstarter exclusives for each copy of the game. One set I'll leave closed just so I can go with the signed copy, assuming, of course, one of them is signed. But beyond that, let's get started with the opening. So, got the handy dandy knife right here, and we'll just cut carefully along the base so as not to damage the box, and leave that to the side so as not to damage the playmats. And we will get going with this. So it should contain the game board, the miniatures for all of the characters, as well as all of the rules and objectives and everything you need to play the game. Get rid of that. And here we... Well, oh, piece there. Here we go, if the box will come off. At least the box is built sturdy, I suppose, considering it's bit difficult to come off or maybe I'm just challenged when it comes to boxes. There we go. Set that in the back there. All right, so I'm guessing this is the rule book at the top which has yep, all of the different rules to build or to play the game. So you have the character decks, so you'll be playing as one of the four characters in the core game. Again, Team Ruby. Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. And since the Kickstarter was funded well enough, there is also Penny, who, this game being named after, is fitting to be in the game as one of the heroes. And you will be fighting against one of the main villains. Those being... Uh, Torchwick as one. Again, always loving to see Torchwick back. He is probably my favorite character overall in Ruby. Sad that he's gone, but, you know, Neo might come back. And you'll be fighting against them. You'll have your semblance. You'll have um, different uh, XP counters and everything to go with your character. You'll level up. You have different character cards. You'll build a deck fighting against the villain's deck, trying to get them to be defeated. All these different things in this game. And, you know, I can do a separate video on how to play the game overall. And yes, Cinder is one of the villains, along with Adam Tauros, I believe. Which we will see as we're going through. Lots of beautiful artwork with this. Oh my god. So much. Oh, the scenario book. There's also going to be different side objectives with this game. While you're fighting the villain, it could also summon minions. Yep, three villains there, being Adam, Cinder, and Roman Torchwick. You gain experience for defeating them. They'll be grim as well. And so many, so many different things. And all of the things that should be included in this box. All right. All of the tokens here, they all have really good art on them. I mean, look at all of this. Counters, life, it's why! Energy counters, dust, lightning, villain, fury, all of these different things. 
This is really well put together. It's Morse Y! Ugh! He's apparently searching for something with the little looking glass there. Ugh. This is actually really well made. Arcane Wonders definitely knows what they're doing. And here looks like the actual game board. If you guys can get that in frame. So, the revealed villain card, hero card, all these different things in the game board. Set that there. I know I can't really get on frame, but still. Ooh. Here are the miniatures. Oh, that that kind of sucks. Ruby's Ruby Scythe kind of got bent around her there. But I mean, the miniatures still look pretty good. Oop. I wonder if this is supposed to be more of an... Well, it's definitely supposed to be an action stance, but it's weird that she got shoved in there. And then... There's Ruby. Ugh. Kind of crammed in there. Hold tight, but still. And then there's Blake with her Gamble Shroud. If that can get in focus. Yeah, Blake with her Gamble Shroud. And then we also have Penny. Combat ready, as she always is. And we also have... Yang and oh, real professional opening here, I swear. And we also have Yang and Weiss. Oh, now it decides to focus. So these figures are very well made. They're pretty sturdy material, sturdy plastic. So I think even when I'm not playing this game, I'm going to have these guys uh, set aside as figures to put around. And then all of the different situation cards, or actually, no, these are the player cards where you'll have your life counters, your aura. Yeah, aura, not semblance, what was I saying before? For Penny, which thanks to the Kickstarter is included with the overall games, and then each member of Team Ruby. So we have all of these for playing, and as you can see, cardstock is nice and thick. There we go. Nice thick cardstock, so they will not be tearing or being damaged at all. And here we go with the actual character decks. So we have Yang's character deck. Yep, should be Yang's character deck based on the, the uh, design that's on the back, and yet it's Penny that's there. Maybe her deck is just included with others. Uh, yeah, that looks like the way it's going to be done. Then we have Blake's character deck here with rubies and probably Weiss's as well, judging by the thickness of it. And then we have the villain decks, which I'm guessing is all Cinder and Torchwick and Adams put together. And lastly, the Grim or the support cards, because there can also be White Fang members that are summoned, as well as Grim and Torchwick's thugs as well. Well, actually, these are Junior's thugs from the bar, but I'm sure Torchwick has thugs who can be summoned on top of that. Yeah, well, you know, Roman's henchmen, but technically Junior's henchmen on top of that. So let's open up some of these and see what we got. All right, all the cards are now unpacked. It may have only been a couple seconds for you guys, but it's been about 45 minutes for me because I've sleeved individually each one of the cards, you know, help protect them, and they shuffle a lot easier. They easily just slide into each other, whereas with um, if they're unsleeved, they definitely don't do that so easy. So it'll help playing the game a lot better, but considering it's a deck game where you have to shuffle and do everything of that sort. So the artwork on these cards is absolutely beautiful. The way the villains are broken down, they have three types of cards in their deck. There is the aggressive card, as you can see in the bottom. So there's aggressive cards, there are balanced cards, and there are subtle cards. And then a few event cards as well. And each of these cards, when this is what you'll see at the top of the deck as it's going through and drawing them, that will tell you what type of attack is coming, whether it's going to be a high power attack or a fast attack, um, something of that sort. You know, I haven't really looked through the rules all that much of the game. I'm just going based on what I remember from watching the video of the Kickstarter. So 
let's go through some of these cards. If I can get it to focus. There we go. Yeah, with Adam, he has, you know, the event cards, Brutality, where it adds speed and damage bonus to his cards. Um, permanently adds, permanently buffs him when certain things come up. Yeah, one speed permanently. So the event cards are definitely the more brutal ones to watch out for. And then there's the subtle cards, which uh, all of the attack cards that he's going to have are going to be broken up uh, or formatted the same way, whereas I believe it's speed in the top corner here, and then these little symbols here are the damage that he'll deal. So the subtle cards, I believe they are the slower cards, but higher damage, higher effect cards. And when you're deciding what cards to play against his attack, um, that is whichever one is faster is the one that's actually going to hit. So whether you'll deal damage to the villain or whether the village will, villain will deal damage to you. So there's all sorts of different attacks, you know, point blank, uh, ruthless command, tactical advance, uh, vengeance, vengeance fits Adam quite well, you know, meditated strike, and then the balanced ones are balanced between speed and attack, obviously, and then the aggressive ones are faster. See, they're a lot higher in the speed. So the way it's going to be broken up is, I believe, you have five cards in your hand of whatever character you're playing as, which, by the way, all of the character cards all have the same back, same art. You have five cards in your hand, and you choose which one to play against your the villain based on what card you see, whether it's aggressive, uh, balanced, or subtle, and you'll choose uh, whichever one. Like, let's say you have a speed four, speed seven, and a speed 10. If you see something that's aggressive, so they're going to be fast, you'll want to play the speed 10 just to be safe. Now, with the character cards, there are a lot more variety in the number of attacks that they have, because of course you want more variety in the actual um, uh, things you can do, that you don't want to have a handful of all the same cards, so you know, there's doubles of some of them, like Spiral Rose and Sonic Rush, Crimson Tornado, so there's doubles of ones in there, and I'm not really sure what the difference of the gold ones are, whether they're added in from the Kickstarters, and each character is also going to have their ultimate, so it looks like there's doubles of a lot of the ultimates, and the rest of the gold cards are different than all of the regular cards that are in there. Not really sure why, but I have a feeling it does something has something to do with the Kickstarter. I'll look into it a little bit later. Um, but yeah, the artwork is absolutely fantastic for all of these cards. There's so much with them, and there's a lot of intricate little uh, abilities with them. Like, you know, there's Aura Blast describes that there, Whirlwind. So there's things that it can do on your turn. Certain cards can do things on your ally's turn. So this is definitely going to be a team game where you and the rest of your team playing with the other characters are trying to take down the villains. So I can give an overall breakdown of the game later on in a different video if you guys want. Just mainly going to go through all of the different artwork and everything here. So we'll go through the rest of the characters first, and then the rest of the villains and support cards. So Blake's, you know, good art on the back here, and her ultimate Nightblade, you know, fit, fits Blake, fit, it fits Blake's dark persona, um, you know, not necessarily her personality. Focus a little bit. There we go. Sling Net, you know, Shadow Step, Crippling Blow, Pounce like a cat. Uh, you got the Avenger, very angry in that shot. Apex Predator, I, I, I don't know if a kitty is necessarily Apex Predator, but damn, that artwork. Um, another Nightblade, Blade Dance, Gamble Whip, interesting. Gambit, feel like she's not part of the X-Men, but hey, I'll take it. Dual wielding, you, you know, back to Sword Art Online days. Blake's the new Kirito, let it be known. Uh, Shadow Clone, Naruto in here. Wow, they're taking a lot of things from different anime. You got dual wielding, Shadow Clone, Gambit. I mean, Gambit's from X-Men, but that was an animated show at one point, so it still fits. Uh, spinning Kick, Dust Bomb, 
Sail, Siphon, Shroud, Unseen Strike, Death Knell, Slice and Dice. All of these nice cards coming with Blake. Now, let's take a look at Weiss. Very elegant in her pose on the back of her cards. And the sleeves that I used are actually the uh, card the card barrier perfect fit sleeves for any of the card players out there. They it's the perfect fit sleeves that fit around Magic the Gathering cards, things like that. And I was able to pick them up for about four bucks per pack of a hundred on Amazon, so four dollars Canadian. So those who live in America can get them a lot cheaper. Um, took about three hundred sleeves in total, so it was about twelve bucks. You could probably get it for under ten, just to protect all the cards, make shuffling a lot easier, and. I don't know, it will make storage of the cards a lot more difficult because there is thicker, but you know, with all the Kickstarter exclusives, everything as well, storage for me is already going to be a little bit tight. So for Weiss, Shooting Star, the Focus, a Shooting Star, the Glyph Boost. A lot of hers are ice based, of course, considering her semblance is does a lot with ice and her semblance or her symbol is a snowflake. An impale, you know, it has slay, deals damage to a minion, destroy it. Uh, quick slash, another shooting star, northern lights. Oh, the artwork on these things too. God, everything. Cold snap, Magic the Gathering, little reference there. Icy blast, flash freeze, parry lunge, Zorn howl. I don't know what the heck language that is. If anyone knows, let me know down in the comments. Also, thank you for still watching, if you're still watching this, because this is not, you know, a professional review, but hey, it gives you a look at the uh, uh, Ruby Combat Ready, at least. Avalanche, Ice Spear, some of the quicker ones. You know, ranged attacks. I don't know if, I'm guessing ranged and melee uh, also have an effect in the game as well, but again, don't know the mechanics in and out. So I'll have to look at that at a different point. Then I'll look at, we'll take a look at Yang. Poison ready for combat in the back of her images. Celica Blast is her ultimate. Oh my god, look at that damage! Oh, she gonna hurt somebody with that. Uh, outmaneuver, battle change, bombardment, clout, got pummel, another Celica Blast, Sun Dragon Fury. Oh my god, that sounds like a move that Sun should be using, but you know. Damn, look at all that damage on that one, too. It's a slower attack, so you can get out sped, but holy crap. Burst fire, and I believe the ultimates can only be used Ferocious Strike once a person's either XP is charged up enough, or their aura is. Hammer Strike, Butterfly butterfly Kick. I don't know, does that really sound like Yang? It sounds kind of more like Blake, honestly. A little more uh, Dance Like a Butterfly, Sting Like a Bee type thing. Yang's more, you know, hit them hard until they're dead type person. And then com that combo punch for that last one. Quickest attack. So a lot of good artwork, a lot of good cards in this overall box. And then there's Penny. You know, quickly go through her. Her ultimate, Razor Rain, if you guys can read that. Has a lot of effects along with that. Precision targeting, cybernetics, a lot of things to do with robots. Blade Volley, Flying Kick. Flying kick. Uh, energy beam. Energy beam, you'd feel like that would do a lot more damage. Wouldn't her ultimate be the giant laser beam she'd shoot out of like seven swords put together? I feel like that should be her ultimate instead of raining down a whole bunch of blades. I don't know, maybe there's one in there. Sword sail, cloud of swords, circle of blades, super jump. Oh, gotta love some of these names. Blade storm, reciprocate, spiral vortex, lightning combo. Looks like a lot of the arts might be repeated in some of them as well, but I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing because there is a lot of art in here. Power Search, there we go, Binary Incision. That's the one I was thinking of where she lets out that giant laser beam. It's ranged and very fast attack, but still, I feel like that would be the ultimate. And then I already went through Adam's deck, but let's take a look at Torchwicks. Now, another thing, it does make these cards a lot more slippery, so it's a bit more difficult to... Uh, stack them and everything, but they do shuffle a lot easier. So Torchwick got his aggressive stance, his balanced stance, looking kind of happy-go-lucky arrogant there, and then subtle stance, looking 
looking very creepy. I don't know if I can get it to zoom in on the face. I don't think I can for some reason, but... And then the event cards. Victorious T Roman Torchwick. We got the Hot Pursuit, the Atlesian Paladin 290, with all of those effects there. High Stakes, Roman the Gambler, Playtime's Over, Little Red. We also got <laughs> Maniacal Laughter, uh, Speed of One, so I don't really know how much that would really do. We also got all of these other ones, Trick Shot, Bullet Storm, Double Down, again the Gambling Man, Rep Reposte, Repost. Reposte? God, I'm butchering other languages. Uh, boot Kick. Oof. 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 Frenzied Assault. Ringleader. Duelist. Yeah, a lot of these have more doubles in them, just because villains are going to be um, a lot more, you know, repetitive in what they do. And since you're not actually choosing them, gives you more variety in your character decks versus the villain decks. Mocking Blow, Torch would definitely like that one. Explosive Shot, and Dead Eye. Never miss a beat. And then, everyone's favorite, Cinder. You know, if she ever does end up uh, passing away in the show, she will always live on in cardboard, especially with this artwork. Dust Weave Vestments. So the clothing that she has that has the dust woven into it. Maiden of Fall, Shattered Moon. Well, I feel like we know what the Shattered Moon's all about now, but yeah. Doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Cinder, but still. Fiery Resolve, Exploding Glyphs. Oh, so they were glyphs that she used. Interesting. Pair that up with Weiss and see what can happen. Uh, hand Deflect, we got the Fiery Projectiles, Lethal Slash, Deceptive Strike, Heart Seeker Arrow, oof, that sounds lethal, Stiletto Kick, all painful, Wall of Fire, Deadly Force, Ember Flare, Black Arrow, Stream of Fire, oof, Glass Shards, and Obsidian Blades. A lot of good cards here. Now, the last stack that we have here from the main game is that of the support cards or the minion cards, because some of the objectives that are there, which I'll show in just a bit, have a separate deck that's with them that will summon minions every so often. So there's the thugs of Roman Torchwick. Um, you know, on the backs of the cards, there's Henchman cards, I guess that's over there. The There's Grim cards, you know, that have all the different Grim on them. Like there's the, uh, what is it, the Goliath Grim. We got the Borbatusk. We have the Griffin. The Griffin, your, it's your fault that I keep calling the Manticores Griffins. I blame you. It's not me, it's you. It's always the Griffins. Ugh. And there's... Also, you know, the Beowulfs, other Grim there. Then there's the White Fang members and the henchmen. So each of the villains, they will have each of their own uh, specific objective that needs to be taken care of. Cinder will have the Grim. Uh, obviously, Adam will have the White Fang and Roman will have the henchmen. Different ones that will flip over at various times that you will need to defeat. So there's various thugs that have different weapons and abilities along with them. Yeah, see, this 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 is from Junior's Bar, not Roman Torchwicks. Yeah, Teddy Bear Head, who's a DJ. And then there's all of these other thugs and henchmen. Uh, and then there's the White Fang, Initiate, or Initiate, Acolyte, the Acolytes, the Elders, the one that took care of Weiss on the train with the giant chainsaw. And then the Grim, the Beowulfs, the Ursi. Griffins, Borbatusks, and the Goliaths. So that's all of the cards in the included in the main game. Also have some nice plastic counters here that are very well made. And also the aura counters here, which I don't know how well you guys can see on the camera. Eh, not too bad. These aura counters that have each of the symbols of each character with them. So you got Ruby, Blake, Weiss, and then Yang and Pennies. 
So these are quite nice, very nice plastic. Again, Wiccan Realms did very, or Arcane Wonders did very well with these. And then these are the objective cards where, you know, White Fang Uprising. So you're going to have, I think, two objectives while playing this game. You know, one from the specific villain that you're fighting and then one alternate, I believe, depending on how many players you're playing with. Again, I can go into better rules with this and then all of the descriptions of them on the back. So, and believe me, if I had sleeves, I definitely put these in sleeves as well. So I highly recommend putting your cards in sleeves, but now we'll clear all this out of the way and move on to the Kickstarter exclusive stuff. All right, now there's a few things we need to open from the Kickstarter exclusives. The first of which I've already cut them open, but I haven't looked at them yet is the villain miniatures. So there is, oof, Roman Torchwick in his orange. Then we have Cinderfall in the nice yellow there. And Adam Tauros in the nice bright red. So I'll probably be keeping all of those figures out separate. These were packaged better than the actual other figures were in the actual box. It's kind of weird. All right, and then there's the Ruby Combat expansion, the Ruby OC pack. This might be the other villain that's in there, so I'm going to go with this first, the EM pack, which I'm guessing is the Emerald and Mercury pack. And I'll know because they come with their own objective as well. Yeah, it's the Emerald and Mercury pack. It's the EM explains everything to do with that. And I believe, yeah, they are individually packaged as well. So let's take a look at their cards. And yes, I will be sleeving them afterwards. Not going to take another break to sleeve them. So they have their own. It's a smaller deck because it's just a side objective. So it looks like there's only aggressive and subtle cards, no balanced. But their combo attack. Oof. The artwork on these looks pretty good. Jade Fang. Oh, just a. Straight up three attack, one damage, or three speed, one damage. Sickle throw. Kusarigama. Ooh, that's an interesting name. Nice artwork, too. Jumping kick. Aw, oh, poor Ruby. That's when she got kicked in the head going running after Penny. Double flare. More sickle throw? Yeah, more sickle throw. Wait, what? Sickle throw as. Aggressive and sickle throw is a subtle. Aw, oh, that's they have different damages too. Huh. I guess one throwing with the dominant hand, one throwing with the non-dominant hand. That's that's weird. It's gonna be a nice little fake out there, but geez. Somersault kick, Kusarigama again. Interesting. Hummingbird spin. Wow, that artwork. Damn. Power lunge. Missile Swarm. Okay, get into some effects here. Another Power Lunge. Ballistic Cartwheel. Oh, it seems Mercury is pretty acrobatic. But yeah, those are the expansion for Emeralds and Mercury. I've seen the villain miniatures. Now, there's two left. The OC Pack and the Kickstarter Pack. I'll go with the OC Pack just to see if this might in fact be the new villain. Oh, the web of Little Miss. So that's who it is. It's Little Miss Malachite. That's who they decided to put in as the new villain, who we've already met. That's disappointing and anticlimactic. I'm sorry for all those who are sitting here watching for the new villain, but at least we now know that she might actually have some combat power in and of herself. Seems like her aggressive stance, though, is more ordering people to do anything for, than anything, and subtle stance. So what can she actually have? So these are the subtle cards. Misdirection. Goon. Oh. Okay, so Ruby's actually in combat with a goon of Miss Malachites. You guys can see that. So it looks like Ruby will have a confrontation with some of her troops. Underworld Spy, definitely a spy or organization. Coercion, and she's torturing Yang. Oh. This implies some interesting things. Plot twist. Sleeper... Sleeper agents. 
Oh, some people are going to join up with Team Ruby and then the Betrayer, it looks like. Lurking Shadows, Alley Ambush, Bouncers, Turncoat. Oh, oh, someone turning against, yeah, everyone with the spider tattoo. Although, this spider tattoo looks a lot more like the Order of the Spiders from Hunter x Hunter rather than the ones we've seen so far. Interesting. And then Assassin and Enforcer. Interesting. So, it's kind of anticlimactic that the new villain was just Little Miss Malachite, but, you know, still makes it interesting, especially considering some of these cards. She's going to encounter Team Ruby and be an integral part in maybe more than just this volume. So, the Kickstarter exclusive pack comes with some extra objectives that we previously or that aren't going to be included with the game if you get them if you get the game separately from the Rooster Teeth store or anywhere else these are ones that will not be included which Neo is one of them Double Vision Silent Rain and White Fang Revolution so there's three Neapolitan objectives her with her umbrella, just Neapolitan, Double Vision, and Silent Rain, because you know Neo Silent, and Neo also has the semblance of creating illusions. So it looks like we might get a character deck for Neo. Look at that. I believe this was actually previously mentioned as one of the uh, end goals for the Kickstarter, is that we were going to have Neo put in, but I, th I must have forgotten that happening. Oh my god, this thing won't cooperate. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Got it. So, now we can take a look at some of the cards that Neo has. With the stance that she has there, aggressive, and her subtle stance. Oh, right, and then they put in extra cards for the villains, um, for each of the villains extra cards for each of the protagonists as well, which we can look through after we take a look at Neo. And again, all of this stuff in the Kickstarter exclusive will not be included with the game that you would get from the Rooster Teeth store. It's only included in the Kickstarter. And oddly enough, I did get a bonus Kickstarter exclusive pack I got one for each of the games that I have, and then a third one, so potentially if there are people who are buying Ruby Combat Ready and want that little extra to go along with it, I might give this away at some point, you know, depending on how things go, we'll see. You know, comment down below if you want that, if you want that to be the case, so yeah, let me know, and let's look at Neo. Got regular old Slash, a couple Slash cards, Illusionary Strike. Look at Neo looking all happy there. We need more Neo in the series overall. More slash attacks that are just higher in damage. Umbral, umbral rebuff. Spinning kick. Yeah. Yang's taking one to the head. Ouch. Skewer. Ah. Painful. Illusionary strike again. Silent sweep. We got helicopter kick. Wasn't that one of Mercury's moves? Feels like it. Skewer, Demure Blast, and Demure Blast at speed 10. Oh, okay. So one's at different speeds. That's pretty good. So we got Neo, and last thing to go through is just the other character ones. So we got even a couple more ultimates for Ruby. Double Slice, Charge Blossom, Dusk Fall, and Final Slash. Sounds like a Super Smash Bros. move. Ruby and Super Smash. That would be incredible. Please let that happen. Please make that a thing. Another Shooting Star for Weiss. Glacial Strike, Cross Cut, Swift Blade, and Frozen River. Two more Night Blades for Blake. Headshot. Oof. Blake with that accuracy. That headshot. Slay. Damage to a minion. Destroy it immediately. Skydive. Midnight Gale. Whirling Blades. Two more Celica Blasts for Yang. Flaming Fists, very fitting. Double Dragon at 11 and a thousand fists. Holy crap. Double Dragon at a thousand fists. That kind of sounds 
Buddhist, is it? Almost? That... Wow. 12! Speed 12! Blazing speed! Yeah, that's... that's fitting. Next round, you gain plus one speed. Yeah, makes sense. Two more Razor Rain. Entangle. Starburst. Cyclone. Energy Blast. And Blade Weaving. All of them get an extra... a 10, an 11, and a 12. Oh my god! Well, yeah. So they all get some very speedy cards, and by the gold border, it looks like these are all the Kickstarter ones. Ooh, Torchwick gets Criminal Justice. Another event card. Bodyguard, Smokescreen, Mastermind, Kingpin. Well, he's not really the Kingpin, as we all know now, but still, it fits. Sneak Attack, Gentleman's Duel with Blake, apparently. Sleight of Hand. Ha! Ah, Roman Candle. I love it. Kane Cannon, Swordsmanship for Adam, another event card. Balance Attacks, gain plus two speed permanently, you don't want to hit that. New Dawn Rises. We got Moon Slice, which is theoretically, in theory, the name of his uh, semblance, Moon Slice, in case you didn't know that. We got Deflect, uh, Faunus Might, Arcing Shot, Furious Onslaught, and then Cinder, the Dark Aura. Myth showing a fair bit of cleavage there. Interesting. Still very lovely art, though. For the rest of the battle, heroes cannot heal Aura. Ooh, that, that hurts. Levitate, Firestorm, Sinister Smite, or the Sinister Smite, Manipulation, Supernova, and Fatal Wound with Obsidian Twister. So this is all that there is for the Ruby Combat Ready. Hope you guys enjoyed this overall opening. It's, it's definitely a long video, probably at least half hour, so for those of you who are still watching, thank you so much. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are going to get Ruby as well, and if you want uh, the Kickstarter exclusive pack in case you weren't able to get it on the Kickstarter. I'm going to open up the second box because I haven't seen any of the signature that's supposed to be here on anything so i don't think this was a signed copy if they remembered to give me the signed copy because i did pay for it so last little bit is just going to be opening up this box if you guys don't want to see the opening of the other box you know feel free to click away now subscribe if you haven't already let me know if you want to see more combat ready content and what that may be let me know down in the comments so thank you guys for watching and i'll clear this out of the way and open up the other box Okay, so I have the other box, already the plastic taken off, and as you can see, there is no signature or anything to imply that it's been signed on any side of this box. There's not on the other box as well, so I'm hoping that they remembered to give me the signed copy, considering I did pay for it, or maybe it was inside the booklet, actually. I didn't check. But, we'll see, don't see it anywhere in here, I don't know where this signature is supposed to be. This is so weird, I don't know why there is no signature. And it feels like, I don't know. What the heck? This just doesn't make sense. On the plus side, at least, the, the box is divided up so you can get all the individual things in there, the individual decks and everything, but I don't understand why there's no signed portion of it. Because I know I paid for it. I don't know. Yeah, that's really weird. I guess they forgot to put in the signed portion of it? Even on the instruction booklet for the other one, there was no, no signature or anything. I don't 
understand why there's no signed copy. Hmm. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, well, I'm kind of just disappointed that there was no signed copy, but yeah. Even on the other booklet, there's no signature or anything. That's disappointing. I guess maybe they forgot to put in the signatures and everything. That kind of sucks considering I paid extra for it. But anyways, thank you guys for those who are still watching. Um, really disappointed I didn't get that signature. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. As I mentioned before, comment down below if you want to see more combat ready. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. See you guys later.